Hello guys, today let's talk about multi-language in Laravel and what to use, PHP files or JSON files, trans helper or underscore helper. This was the topic of the first lesson in our latest course on multi-language Laravel and in this video I will just read you this lesson and we will discuss in the comments which are better, which are more convenient to use and what you need to know. Again, I will repeat my thought that it's pretty weird to read the article for you on YouTube, but that's the most effective for me to be able to create more content instead of recreating that in PHP Storm. So let's zoom the text in browser and let's begin. We are talking about static text translation with underscore function, for example. So you've seen something like that in Blade. So this comes from Laravel Breeze, from what I remember, or JetStream, they use the same function in Blade files. And you can store those translation keys in two ways, in PHP files, many files, or one bigger JSON file in your lang folder. And what is the difference? If you store translations in PHP files, so for example, you have auth register with this, and then the key becomes kind of like array key in a developer way dot notation. So dot means this is the file name in lang, for example, your language, and then this is the file name auth. And then after the dot, you can define your structure with array key and then another sub array and sub array, however many levels you want. So this would be an example file. So register name becomes the key here. And then array by array, file by file, you create your set of language translations. Important notice about lang folder in Laravel versions. It was different in Laravel versions over the years. So for example, in Laravel 10, in the latest version at the moment, there's no lang folder at all by default. If you want to use translations, you need to either create that folder manually or run lang publish, which would copy the default core framework translations into the lang folder and create it automatically with English language by default. And in earlier versions of Laravel, you could find resources lang. So first it was resources lang, then in Laravel 9, it was moved into lang one level up. And then in Laravel 10, by default, it disappeared with ability to publish it. But actually even in Laravel 10, it would work with resources lang. So if you have older project and you want to upgrade to Laravel 10, you can still use resources lang that would totally work. So that's just a notice along the way. And then if we move on with how this is actually visible on the web page, this is the key. So important thing to know with PHP file translations, if you don't specify the translation for some key, it will actually show the key on the page, which is not user friendly. And here we listed benefits and drawbacks of PHP files. So with PHP files, you can have multiple levels. That's good. That's convenient from developer point of view. So you can define the keys and also multiple validation files, which is convenient. And you can have identical keys like name. Name may mean different things in registration or in validation, for example. So you could use the same key in different files. And you can write comments in those files because they are PHP files. So all the common syntax things work, including comments. Comments. But the drawback is, as I said before, you need to type all the strings, otherwise it would show the keys to your users, which is not ideal and not user friendly. And also PHP files, this structure is more friendly to developers, but not that friendly to non-developer translation people. And it depends who is translating your languages. Maybe it's someone on your team, like a developer who speaks another language, but maybe it's an external person, totally non-developer, and you would send a bunch of PHP files to them with keys that may not be understandable with the context to them. And another potential drawback, not for everyone, it may become a bigger mess if you're not careful and you create like dozens of PHP files and then get lost in them. Now, if we move on to another alternative, JSON files. In the blade, it may look really similarly, so underscore and the key, but the difference is that key is in a human-friendly format, like it would be a sentence, a phrase with spaces and all the other signs, like it would be a natural sentence. So instead of having this, you have just a normal word, which you would put as a key in JSON file like this. So this key could be a sentence, which would be easily understandable for non-dev translators. And then you have one big EN JSON file for all the English translations. So you send that JSON to the translator and it comes back with translated these right side values. 
So benefits of JSON files. As I said, you can write full sentences, you can pass it to non-deaf translator easier, and you can reuse the same name, for example, in multiple files. But the drawback is you cannot have nested keys. So it's kind of the same example and it depends on what your structure of translations. Name may mean the same thing, but may mean different things. So you cannot prefix that in JSON files like you would do in PHP files. Also, you cannot write comments and your JSON file may be huge. So you have to be extremely careful when naming things. And it can also become a mess in a way, just one huge file of mess where you would forget that you used, for example, the string name somewhere on top, like a few hundred lines earlier. So yeah, these are the differences. And in the comments below, let's discuss which ones do you use? And generally, what is your translations process in the team? Who translates? And what is the process of that? Just share your experience. But that's not all in this lesson. A few more things. Interesting kind of question or situation. What happens if you use both? It may be a cause of trouble. So imagine the scenario. You have auth file like this. And then somewhere in JSON, you have auth as a key. So which one would be picked by Laravel? The answer is, if you do something like this, you would have an error. Why? Because Laravel would try to pick the file name first, and it would find auth as a file, would return an array, not a string. And then, of course, the array is parameter must be string, but array given. So be extremely careful if you use both PHP and JSON files to not override each other. And final thing in this lesson, trans versus underscore function, which to use. In practice, I've seen both being used, probably more underscore function recently, but the answer is under the hood. In the core of Laravel framework, the helper underscore underscore actually uses trans under the hood. So in many cases, there's no difference. The only difference is if you pass no value to underscore, it would return null. If you pass no value to trans, it would return translator instance, which may be helpful in some cases. But in reality, no one would pass zero value, I guess. So yeah, this is the end of the lesson. That was the first lesson. It's actually free for anyone. For every course, I usually publish a few first lessons for free. So in this multi-language course, from what I remember, two or three lessons first are free. And I will link in the description below the full course. So if you want to go deeper into locales, validation messages, plural singular, then other topics, the link will be in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.